Hello and welcome to Mark's Woodworking Challenges. I'm Mark, your host, and today we have a hand plane challenge. Today's video will be about all about the Stanley 46. What features does it have and how does it function? And there's a reason I selected the, this subject for today's video. As you'll recall, maybe, in my last video, we did a thorough evaluation of the functionality of a Stanley 41 combination plane. And in that video, I went through some of the history of the Stanley 41 and its successor combination planes including the 43, the 46, and the 45. And one of the things I noted was that uh, the Stanley 46 came out only three years after the Stanley 41. Stanley 41 came out in 1871. Stanley 46 came out in 1874. And I thought that seemed a little odd, you know, especially, you know, why would you release a new combination plane that's going to compete sort of head to head with your, what I thought was the flagship model of Stanley's combination planes. And so, so that's, I, I sort of conjectured that, especially after we evaluated the Stanley 41, I realized that some of the functionality of the Stanley 41 was not very good. Specifically, it's great at plowing, grooves, but when it comes to using the filister bed, it sort of left a lot to be desired. And so I postulated that the Stanley 46 was released to sort of address all these shortcomings in the Stanley 41. Um, and then as I was doing that video, I realized several facts. One fact is, well, I do have a Stanley 46. But even better than that, fact number two is this Stanley 41 is a Type 4 made in 1876 about five years after it was first introduced. This Stanley 46 is a Type 2, also made in 1876. So I realized that these two planes were literally made in the same year who knows, maybe, probably even in the same factory. I'm, I'm not quite that good a historian on this, but... And so, holy cow, you just can't ask for a better comparison than that. You know, when they're literally of the same, exact same vintage. And so, that's what gave me, you know, the, the incentive to make today's video. Uh, to give and to literally have compare the Stanley 41 head to head with the Stanley 46. Um, well, first we're going to go through the Stanley 46 and sort of look at the features. As a Type 2, I think probably more people are familiar with the later types of the Stanley 46. The Type 2 is a little bit different and it has some odd uh, construction details and so we're going to go through that first and then after we get done with that we're going to go through we're going to evaluate how each plane works in all the same sorts of tests that I did last week for the Stanley 41. And so uh, let's get right to it. This is the Stanley 46 Type 2. 
combination plane, as I said, manufactured in somewhere around 1876. But we're going to just go through some of the features for a minute. Certainly the most important feature on a 46 is that the let's just slide this thing out a little bit so that you can see very well here's the blade right here and so it's skewed so instead of being perpendicular the cutting edge being perpendicular to the skate this one is skewed and that will help a lot in functionality because a skewed blade typically will slice through, especially cross grain, easier than a, than a perpendicular arrangement. Um, let's just take this off. The second most obvious feature is the, instead of having, is in the Stanley 41, the Stanley 41 had two different fences, one for cutting grooves and one for cutting rabbits and philisters. In this case, we have one fence and the fence, here's, here's this side of it, here's this side, and so the fence actually is a two-part arrangement. You loosen these screws and the fence comes out from these holes just like so we'll put it back in um, like that comes off comes back on and then tighten now it's always odd, it actually loosening tightens it, which I always have trouble with. Okay, so that's the, the second biggest feature of the Stanley 46 combination plane. Um, another feature is We have knickers. Here's one knicker. Might be a little hard to see here. It's the same kind of arrangement where the knicker is pressed into a dovetailed cavity and theoretically is meant to slide up and down for adjustment in that cavity. Just like I, this is a, the same arrangement as the Stanley 41, and just like the Stanley 41, this sucker is pretty well frozen in there. Now, we have another knicker on the other skate, or the other fence, in that case right here same same uh, same way of, of, of holding it in there dovetailed cavity pressed in likewise pretty much uneven un unable to be moved at this point at least not at least it's scary to try to do so um, so that's, that's the third thing that I wanted to comment on. Um, we have a, a, a primary depth stop, sort of a conventional type here. Got a mounting place for it right here to control the depth of the cut. And it can also go on the other on the on the fence as well in this hole right here so either way either side works just the same 
they have a fairly unusual extra depth stop, the so-called wraparound depth stop. And it will mount on the top of the, of the fence rod like so. So I guess if you really wanted to, you could have it's maybe if you had uneven sides to your uh, groove, one side being higher than the other, maybe that would come in handy. But in general, this is pretty much regarded as 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 a as a superfluous part. It has serving no real purpose. And for that reason, in a lot of the uh, Stanley 41, 46s, the, this particular part has gone missing most of the time. And it's a, actually an extremely rare thing to come across in, in the wild. Okay, let's see, what else can we say about this? I was going to comment on the, it is also got sort of a floral design, but in this case the, 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 it is not so deep and pronounced, so you have a deeper etching or molding, I don't know what the right word is for it, but it's it's more pronounced in the case of the Stanley 41, which makes the Stanley 41 just one of the reasons why people think it looks so nice. Uh, it, this is just subdued. The 46 is just, the, the decoration is sort of subdued relative to the 41, and so it, you know, just doesn't look quite as flashy. In this case, the front knob is on the main body. Um, in, in later combination plane examples, they moved it to the fence so that you could like sort of go like that. But in this case, it's on the main body, and I think in the 46 cases, it stayed on the main body throughout the production period. It came with... Ten irons, cutters, uh, basically sort of nine conventional cutters and one with a slot in it for doing matching. So uh, sort of similar to the Stanley 40, 41 case, except there's, a, I think, more of them in the case of the 46. Unlike some of the other combination planes where the fence or second skate or whatever you want to call it, it also serves to support the cutter. But in this case, in the Stanley 46 Type 2, there's no extra support for, for the cutter. You can see that the, the fence ends here ends there, has clearance underneath. So no matter what position you put the fence in, there's no extra support and in fact you can move the fence around at will without bothering the cutter at all. That means that this area right here Basically, all the support for the cutter comes from this surface right here. You know, basically a section through the main body and this little triangular bit that sticks out the side. That is it. And so, already you can see that this cutter I, I had in there was, you know, had a fair amount sticking out to the side. Let's just see what it's like for the largest cutter. This is the largest one. 
it's that's uh, that's all the support it gets so there's something I actually have never never used this larger cut largest cutter so I act, I'm, I think I'm going to try it out sometime um, and see what happens so I need to say a little bit more about the cutters themselves only an eighth of an inch thick as compared to the quarter inch thickness of the Stanley 41 cutters um, you know so that's definitely you know I that has to be make for a little bit more vibration although it in most of the sizes that I use it hasn't really been a problem then um, another thing that I did certainly need to mention is that um, the depth of cut is entirely manual there's no screw or lever or anything that pushes puts it up or down it's all finger power and, and I, I should also mint I mean there's no real tapping or anything like you can do with a a wooden plane or something like that it's pretty much you got finger power or nothing I want to say a few words about sharpening a skew blade. What I have here is the Stanley 46 sitting upside down looking from the rear of the plane to the front. The blade is right here, it's in the proper place and you can see that with, the, with this skew angle the, the cutting edge of the blade is pretty much perpendicular to the skate of the plane so you would get a flat bottom to your groove when you cut it now just for illustration I'm going to hold another cutter next to it in about the same orientation as near as I can get it and to, to try to illustrate that if this angle is not just right this the relationship of the cutting edge to the skate of the plane will not be correct so hopefully I'm gonna you know basically it's it's slanted like this rotated like that and then and, and then you can see it's actually fairly difficult to mimic the geometry but hopefully this will illustrate that that's just about it right there freehanding it and then if the angle isn't right just a little bit like that will make it slope one way or the other so if that skew angle is not exactly right a very small deviation will cause the bottom of your groove to be sloped one way or the other so in summary I love a skew angle for cutting through the wood but when it comes to sharpening it it's not my favorite thing there you have it simply too much to cover in a single video so we're going to wrap this part up as part one and then on our next video we're going to put both the 41 and the 46 through their paces and let the best combination plane win that'll do it for this video thanks for watching please consider subscribing hitting the like button and by all means leave comments and so we'll see you next time on Mark's Woodworking Challenges.